You're watching Victory Life Today with Al and Angie Burke. Welcome to Victory Life Today. I'm Al Burke. And I'm Angie Burke. Thanks so much for joining us today. We're going to be talking about how God wants us blessed so that we could be a blessing. And I know we covered some of that, but you know, Al, we're going to be talking about or not. (laughs) (laughs) So we're blessed to be a blessing or not. Right. And it's totally up to us, but God's intention to bless the church is so that we could bless others. Of course, we benefit from it and we have, you know, people have a good life when they're blessed, you know, but his intention was for us to turn around and give away what we have or some of what we have. Yeah, I always say that uh, when it comes to, like Andrew says, if God can get it through you, he can get it to you. God can get it to you. It doesn't matter how much money you need. He can get it to you in a minute. But I always say this, my focus is on God and his kingdom and how do I bless the kingdom. But what I've learned is you can live really good on the crumbs that fall off the table. Even that. That's awesome. You know what I mean? So that's what I found over the years. So we're blessed to be a blessing. You know, if you're a Christian, the Bible says you're already blessed. And I need to go over this one with you. So you know, Ephesians 1, 3 says, blessed or praised be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing or every benefit in the heavenly places in Christ. So he already did the job. He blessed us. Right. And, you know, facts in your life are different than truth in your life. And, you know, it may be a fact that you're not living the blessed life, you're in poverty, maybe you're sick, maybe you have broken relationships, maybe your children are in rebellion, whatever that might be, that's a fact. But the truth is that you are blessed. And you might say, well, well, what good is that to me? I mean, I want to see the blessings in my life, and we're going to show you how you can see the blessings in your life and what happens when you hold back and what what God feels about the whole thing. Yeah, there's a whole thing of putting his kingdom first. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, which we don't do. We seek our own welfare and well-being. And then with what's left, we give to God. But it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. So when it talks about being blessed, it's almost like God goes, I'll just throw this at him. In other words, it's such a non-issue that you'll be blessed beyond all you could, because it says it'd be added to you. That's good. And it's so short. It isn't like, well, and when you do this, oh, I'm going to bless you. He just goes, like, what do you need? I I need a million dollars, piece of cake, next. Uh, You know what I mean? There might be some things we need to do. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I mean? But but I'm trying to say the scripture seems to make it look like, what's the big deal? It's not a big deal to God. But it's not. God owns the universe. He owns the earth. He made the gold in the earth. He's got all the money there is. He invented money. So God wants you blessed so you can bless others. Uh, You know, what are you doing with what God has blessed you with? Right. Everybody or most people have some kind of a blessing in their life or there are things where there's extra. Oh, yeah. And you can give that extra to someone else. Maybe you have extra time. Maybe you have an extra talent that could be used or extra money. Um, you know, Matthew 25 talks about the sheep and the goats standing before Jesus. The sheep lived their lives on the earth blessed. They did something with what they had. That's right. That was the sheep. You know what I mean? They blessed others with the blessing they had. They fed the, he talks about, did you feed the hungry? Did you give water to the thirsty? Did you house the homeless or, you know, did you lead them to us? What did you do? It's kind of like, what did you do? And you don't want to be standing there on judgment day. And again, it's only a judgment of rewards. It's not a judgment of your sin and your failures. But you want to make sure you have something you've done that's rewardable. Okay. That's right. And, you know, maybe we don't, uh, you know, maybe you're not 
maybe you don't have a prison ministry, but you're over here doing something else for the Lord. It's all good. Right. It's right. you don't have to do it all. And you know, not everybody's in a pulpit. Right. We've got this thing in our head that we're not doing anything for God if we're not standing in a pulpit. That's wrong. And, you know, you, you have a good point about doing all of these things, you know, you just start with one, you know, focus on one. But you have a good point in, in uh, you know, maybe you're not good at this, but maybe you're good at this. But God is looking at the heart and he's looking at the heart of the individual. Do you really want to do this for me? Right. You know, it's more important than what we do. And people, it's the motives. I've always said the heart attitude is way more important than what you actually yeah, do. That's and, true. you know, you look at David, right? God says he's a man after my own heart. And and he had such a heart for God, yet he screwed up big time. But Saul screwed up and he was removed from the kingdom. Why? Saul's inner heart attitude was wrong. It was about Saul. And when it's about you, you're already screwing up. You're already going downhill. It has to be about Jesus. Focus your whole life on him. What does he want from me? What does he want me to do? Um, <clears throat> we need to learn how to abound to every good work first. And That's what we good. do is we're concerned about our welfare first. And if there's anything left over, We'll do that for the Lord. That's good. Let me read this to you. It's 2 Corinthians 9, 8. God is able to make all grace abound toward you so that you, always having enough of everything, may abound to every good work. He's saying it right there. Right. If you're willing to put the good work that I have given you first, right. not your good work, the one he showed you to do, if you'll do that, you'll have enough, you'll have everything, all sufficiency in all things wow. is what it says. And we don't even do that. We, we're, our minds are focused on the dollar value and the money and everything else. And God's saying, just put me first in all of this. Right. You right. know, um, like like this TV show that we're doing right now, God just dropped this on us. Really, God did the whole Thank thing. You, but what did we do? We spent our lives learning. Right. right. So that we were ready when God says it's time to go. Right. Right. That's really good. And, you know, uh, getting back to being blessed, you know, it's really nice that you could go out to dinner with your family, but wouldn't it be nice to go out to dinner with them and pay for someone else's meal also? I mean, you know, we don't think of those things. How about buying groceries for yourself? But what about, wouldn't it be nice if you were able to purchase something or some groceries for someone else who may not be able to? You know, and paying your bills. It's great to pay your electric bill, but wouldn't it be great to pay someone else's bill? You know, you remember the story. I, th I think it was you that you were in, um, you know, whatever, McDonald's or something on the car line and you paid for yours and you paid for the person behind you. Right. And we heard her say, screaming out of the car when they said it's all paid for. She said, now I know there really is a God. Oh, wow. That, that was, and what was that, 20 bucks? Right. I don't even think it was that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. Um, That's interesting. That's really good. When, when you got that focus on, okay, uh, yeah, I know I need to eat. Not, it's okay. I'm going to buy myself a meal, but I want to do something for someone else. Then they might know that he is the Lord and there is none other. Right. And that's right. what you, I think it was you, somebody did. I remember hearing the lady screaming, saying, now I know there really is a God. And, you know, God will use that. Maybe he was setting up a scenario in that person's life where she was ready to make a decision for Christ, mm -hmm. but she wasn't sure yet. And boom, you hit it. So you never know wow. you have the impact of your small blessing, what it can make. Yes. And you know, it's really true. You know, when God tells us to do things or give or do what I did on the, on the line, uh, for McDonald's or, or whatever, wherever we were, I don't even remember if that was it. Um, you know, he already, like Al said, set this whole thing up. We don't know it, but nine out of 10 times when Al and I have ever given to people who we know struggle here and there, nine out of 10 times it met the need Exactly. The amount that we have given to those people met the need that they had either to uh, 
a, a bill that had to be paid. The light was going, the lights were going to be turned off. They were going to get evicted, whatever it is. And God always brings it back to us and shows us just like that lady on the line. You know, she was obviously asking God for some proof that he right. exists. He had this whole scenario set up. That was so And good. then you went and blessed her by paying for her meal. And just so you know, you can bless me anytime you want. <laughs> If you want to buy my meal, it's okay. I'm going to let it go. You know, Al and I purchased this home um, in North Carolina, <laughs> and it's really a beautiful home. But we did it for a reason. The number one reason we did it was to bless people. People are constantly here at the home. Uh, they come for vacation. It's a beautiful spot to rest. It's on a lake. Uh, we, we bless them with food. We bless them with the boat rides. We, we do whatever we can do. That's it because at this stage in our life, we need to downsize. But what we have done was we, uh, purchased or had a house built, and now we're able to bless others. And that was the primary reason why we did that. The yeah, primary it really was. reason. I mean, you know, it's fun to live here, but the point is now I, it, it, it allows me to be a blessing to others. And this is, this I is now the have the facility to do it with. Right. And if God can get it through you, he can get it to you. And he certainly That's got right. it to us. And he can get it through us. And, uh, look at how personal God takes this. The king will answer, truly I say to you, as you have done it for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you have done it for me. So when you're blessing others, you are blessing the Lord. But now we're going to take it to the other side, the not side. Yeah, like, are you blessed, but you're hoarding everything? <laughs> and you're trying to build your little kingdom and your little castle and to see if you can get to a certain dollar value. Uh, many years ago, I used to do that. I used to say, well, we had everything going on. I said, if I can just get a hundred grand in the bank and all my bills paid. See, I was, my focus was on me. It wasn't on God. Instead of saying, hey, I got 80 grand that I could give to God's kingdom. Right. No, I was trying to build my own castle and my own kingdom and saying, look what I got. I got this hundred grand sitting in the right. bank. And, and it's free and clear hundred grand, you know, it's right. okay to have money. It's okay to do these things. It's just a matter of attitude. You know, are you That's blessed right. or are you blessing yourself? And are you cheap? <laughs> but in Matthew 25, 41 to 45, we look at how Jesus feels about that, that he has blessed us with so much and we're hoarding it and we're building our own storehouses and keeping everything in there. And we're not even tithing. Uh, and then he says this, then he will say to those at the left hand, depart from me, you cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels, for I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not take me in. I was naked and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison? Or when did we not serve you? Right? You know, it's, it's really, this scripture is really talking about, he's not talking about anybody. He's really talking about Christian people who are naked and hungry because he takes it personally. Yes. He said that you did it to me. It's like you didn't. You, what? I thought you were in heaven somewhere, and we're down here, and this guy's got no food, and he's in bad shape. I didn't do this for you. He takes it personal. That's his relationship with us is so strong, and his love for us is so strong. When he says this, he said, "You did it unto me." Wow. Think about wow. that because it, I could I could picture anybody saying, "Did you know Jesus is down in jail?" What? I'm going to go down there and get them out. Mm -hmm. But if it's somebody else, it's like, well, whatever. Wow. Do, you, do you see what I mean? Yeah. Um, so all these people, these people were blessed too. But well, here's the thing you have to understand about this. God doesn't want you to be a blessing to somebody else. And now you have a shortfall. Yeah. He, it, it, you, you're blessed to be a blessing. Right. You will have excess over an abundance, and it might only be a hundred dollars or two. You know, I was talking to somebody the other day, and he said to me, "I, I just was had this dream, and I, what I really want to do in my life at Christmas time is walk around." And back then, they used to have thousand dollar bills and give everybody a thousand. Just walk up to them and give them a thousand dollars. 
Oh, wow. Yeah. I said, well, you can do that to me. <laughs> but here's the thing. I, I understood that because I had the same like thinking, like, wouldn't it be so cool at Christmas time to just walk around with a wad of hundreds? It, it would. And just say, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Just start giving people hundred dollar bills. Just think if you were to hand that to somebody, it might be that God's working on his heart right now. Wow. And you go and you hand it to him and he goes, now I know there really is a God. Wow, that's that's. But so it would good. just be cool and fun to do. And when you do these kind, maybe you can't give everybody a hundred dollar bill at Christmas time, but maybe you can give a couple people $20. Right. Start somewhere. Start right. being a blessing somewhere to somebody and God will increase you so you can increase your blessing. Right. You know, as God prospered us and prospered us, I kept increasing my giving. That's right. Because if I was to do it at a 10% or 20%, doesn't matter as your income goes up, you've got to, you don't keep, you don't give the same $100. Right. That's right. Do you That's see what right. I mean? That's right. So, so they, you, you got to provide the clothing and help the homeless and people. And these people did not do it. This is this. These are the ones that were blessed and did not do it. They hoarded it for themselves. For themselves. They figure I've got my own bills. I've got my own family. I've got to do that. And God doesn't want God doesn't want you to give away your money for providing your family to somebody else. You know, He wants you to the point where you can do that without feeling it. But uh, but but you can give something. Okay, yeah. and these people didn't do that. And look what Jesus said. You know, he you, you know the oh, least they could do, the least you could do is br bring it down to the church. That's right. That's the least you could do is give them some money. They'll do something good with it. Right. You know, get past all the politics and the things that they don't do right and say, I'm giving it to God, but I'm giving it through the church to God. Right. Be a blessing right. somewhere, even if it's not a lot. You know what I mean? And here's what Jesus will say. Truly, I say to you, as you did it not for one of the least of these, you did it not for me. So what we do or don't do to others, we are doing or don't do, are not doing to Jesus. You know, you know, the scripture says, uh, whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Whatever we do, he takes it. He is affected by the way we bless others you or not. You did it unto me. For in the least <laughs> of not. these, you did it unto me. Yes. Isn't that wild? He's affected either way. He's either blessed or, I don't know, deeply or not disappointed. Blessed. Right. Yeah. Exactly. You know, everybody has something to give. Like I was saying, even if it's 10 bucks, you, you have something you can, you know, um, Kenneth Copeland said he was so broke when the pot came around, he had a pencil. It was all he had. And he put a pencil in there. You would think, why bother? He well, did it anyway. Well, I know. Yes. Benny Hinn said he had given all his money away, gave everything away. He had nothing. And when they passed the pot around, he went, oh, my God, I don't have anything to put in there. And he went in his pocket and he pulled out a dime. And he said, literally, it was my last dime. And I put it in the pot. You don't have to do that, but you yeah. can be a blessing in some way. Let me let me read you the scripture in Luke twenty one. Yeah, one to four. He uh, Jesus commends the poor widow in this scripture, and he looked up and he saw the rich putting their gifts in the treasury, and he saw a poor widow putting in two mites. That's like two pennies. And he said, "Truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of them." For all these out of their abundance have put in their gifts for God, but she out of her poverty has put all her livelihood in this. And what he was saying was the rich people were putting money in there and they were showing everybody, look how rich I am and look how blessed I am and all this money. And it didn't even affect their life. In other right. words, they were going to live the same whether they put a thousand. It wasn't thousand, a sacrifice. It wasn't a sacrifice. Right. She gave every penny she had. Wow. You could say she gave 100%. Well, she did give 100%. Oh, wow. And they gave maybe 5 or 10 or 20%. And it's all good to do that. If you're a rich man, go ahead and put money in here. But what he was saying was she was totally, once she put her two mites in, she was totally dependent on what Jesus was going to do. Absolutely. That's it. She, she trusted him. She trusted him. Wow. Wow. It was so just, whatever we give, big or small, if we give it cheerfully, God considers it great. And I'm going to read you 2 Corinthians 9, 7. It says, let every man give according to the purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or out of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And you got to understand the cheerful giver doesn't mean you when the 
pot is coming and it's down at the far end of the pew, you start getting happy and cheerful. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah, Al yeah. doesn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I try to take a few out. No, no I'm only kidding. Don't. But w- when you put that money in, you should be thankful and glad that you can do something for God. Oh, and yeah. thankful and knowing that God will bless you back. It brings joy to your heart, makes you the cheerful. Joy, the that joy I can that do, we get. I can do my little bit for God, that Absolutely. when I do my little bit in the least, I've done it unto him. Right. Unfortunately, a lot of people, when they just give a little, they don't feel like uh, like they've done anything for the Lord. But God does consider that precious if that's all you've got. And you're giving it cheerfully, knowing that you're blessing the heart of God, then he considers it, uh, he, he's pleased beyond measure. He's pleased with whatever. And I remember Al and I, uh, we were at uh, camp meeting for Andrew Womack. Mm-hmm. I remember that. And um, there was this woman, we were told that there was this woman there that offering time came and she could not walk. They had brought her in in a wheelchair and she couldn't walk for years. And uh, so they offering time came and she didn't have any money. And even if she did, she had no way to get up there to to give into the offering. But she had a sweater on and she literally took off the button, a button off of that sweater. And the minute she made that decision to give, she, without even realizing it, stood up and started walking to the front to give that to the Lord. Al, she was miraculously instantly healed. She didn't even realize it while she was walking up to give that button. But to God, that button meant the world to him because it was, again, the heart behind Her attitude. The she was so grateful to give something yes. to God. Like, God, you considered me enough that you would accept my gift. Absolutely. Do you see what I mean? He, it, it, it makes all a hard attitude. Attitude's everything about all Well, you know what, Al? It was humility on her part. Sure. Because she had to be humble enough to take that off, knowing that people were watching and then going up and putting that in where people were standing there with the baskets and you put a button in, you know, that was humility, but she didn't care because she just wanted to bless the king. You and know? the whole thing is maybe somebody walked up there and threw a hundred bucks in it right, right. before her, right. but that was everything to her. That's and right. the hundred bucks to that guy maybe was not a big deal, but it's all good. It's good to give. It's just that. We, it's this hard attitude. We're yes. blessed to be a blessing, and you have to understand this concept. It's not for you. It's for you to use to bless the kingdom. Yes, and people get, a lot of people get like, oh, well, how come you have all the luck? And we don't even want to get into luck. But it's just that, you know, some people are prosperous in the kingdom and some people aren't, you know. And as you said before, God gives seed to the sower. Are we going to sow that money into other people? Because he knows our hearts. He knows people's hearts. And can he trust us when that harvest comes back in to give it back out? Can he, tr- can he trust you to do it? That whatever comes in, that you can be trusted by God to give it back out because he can't get the money to you if he can't get it through you. And let it's me just awesome. make a little side note here, just so you understand, there is no such thing as luck. That's a Good word point. the devil invented, and he uses it against you. He finds someone who's way more prosperous than you, and then he says, they're lucky and you're not. Luck is only blessing and cursing. The devil curses, God blesses. Right. Right. So get on the blessing side of this. And how do we do that? By giving unto God's kingdom. Absolutely. It, it's up to you. Right. It's really wide open. You can be as rich as you want to be by your giving. Right. You set the stage for this. That's right. That's right. And 2 Corinthians 9, 8 says, God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you always having sufficiency in all things. Wouldn't that be nice for a lot of you? sitting there that you don't have sufficiency in all things, but that having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. That means no matter what, where you give or what you do, you can abound to it because you won't even feel it. You can give and there will be no lack on your part. When you give into God's kingdom, he's already bringing it in. You will not be diminished by what you do for God. You will be enriched by what you do 
for God. Well, that's right. And then it's not even only money, Al. It's time, like time. It's, it's talent. Some, Maybe you talent. can sing or play an instrument Absolutely. and do it for free for the Lord. If people give their time, they'll have so much time on their hands. You know, you say you're busy from morning till night and you've got no... Give time to someone else. This is a this is a principle, a faith principle in the kingdom of God. You give time to someone else and then you'll have so much time to complete anything and everything you have to do in your own life. And it's just a supernatural thing. It's, you can't even explain it. But it's all good. It's all good. Well, we want to encourage you to go to victorylifeministries.org and get a copy of our book, Hidden Treasures Revealed. And this uh, This is a treasure, what we're doing. Yes, this teaching today is in this book. There are different teachings in here, and you can meditate on one particular chapter for months if you need to, and uh, go to the scriptures and compare back and forth, and it will really help you. And, uh, you know, we thank you for giving in to Victory Life Ministries. We always appreciate everything you can do or anything you can do uh, to help us further the gospel and get it out to the world. So again, go to VictoryLifeMinistries.org today and get your copies of Hidden Treasures Revealed. Thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. We hope it helped you and we hope it encouraged you to just give into the kingdom of God and it will be given back to you. Good measure. Thanks so much for joining us. Remember, victory is always yours through Jesus Christ. We'll see you next time. The Bible tells us that if we cry out for knowledge and ask for understanding and search for them as we would silver or hidden treasure, then we will gain the wisdom and the knowledge of God. God's Word is full of treasure, precious, highly valued truths that are worth far more than gold or any other earthly treasure, and it will enable you to live life victoriously. In my book, Hidden Treasures Revealed, I share the revelations that I've received from the Lord over the past several years, including how to rely on grace rather than self-effort, how to truly give our cares and worries to Jesus, how to practically use our God-given authority to fight the devil and win, and much more. God's plan for His children is to live above their circumstances, not beneath them. Understanding the truths within this book will help you do just that. My prayer is that these teachings will encourage you to dig deeper for yourself and reap the benefits that will change your life forever. The ball is in your court. God has already done everything to ensure your success in this life through the death and resurrection of His Son, Jesus. Don't let His promises go to waste. Seek them out, find them, and walk in them toward a life of victory. Go to VictoryLifeMinistries.org and get your copy today. Al and Angie Burke are the founders of Victory Life Ministries an organization that is designed to help you live your best life so that you would be inspired and know that God will fulfill all of your needs according to His purpose. Live a life set ablaze by faith, filled with purpose. Live life above your circumstance.